Brian Boyle rebounded from a horrific car accident that left him on life support. And just three years later, he realized his dream of competing and completing the Ironman World Championship. So don't miss this incredible tale of perseverance tonight. After the game, right here on Sports Night. Yeah, Brian Boyle, a local athlete, has learned a lot about his own strength. A chance meeting with adversity might be where it started, but for Brian, it's where he finishes. Brent Harris has that story. Tucked away in Southern Maryland. Swimming for Division III St. Mary's College. Brian Boyle competes. He doesn't hold any school records in the pool, at least not yet, but you can't measure Brian's success simply by a 50-meter race. Because for him, success is in the journey. Well, Brian's road to St. Mary's would take a detour. Just a few months after graduating from high school, Brian was returning from swim practice and heading home just a few miles down this road when his life would take a traumatic turn right here at this intersection. The phone call. That it's every parent's dreaded phone call. It was July 2004, and Brian never saw the massive dump truck in his blind spot. The truck crushed his Chevy Camaro as it plowed into the driver's side door. Brian was airlifted to the trauma center at Prince George's Hospital. We knew his heart had been pushed over to the other side of his chest. Um, his liver had been lacerated. His kidneys weren't functioning. Both my lungs were collapsed, uh, broken clavicle, shattered pelvis. Every organ in his body was damaged. Took his spleen out. Took the spleen out. They just wanted to see if they could get Brian stable enough to where he could get through the night. He made it through the first night, and then the second. And Brian spent the next two months in a coma. That was a roller coaster ride. It's every day. One day would seem like it was going okay. The next day, all hell would break loose again. We're signing papers for more operations. There was a total of 14 operations, 36 blood transfusions. Brian died eight times. At one time, I think I was taking him back to surgery the fourth or fifth time. One of the intensives came and whispered in my ears, what's wrong with you? You're operating on cadavers now. What's this? I said, he's not a cadaver. His blood pressure is 70, 80, and he has a pulse. At that point in time, I was, I was shattered. Those dreams were gone. Just like the bones in my body, those, those dreams were shattered. Doctors had told Brian that he may not walk again. He had lost over 100 pounds, and it was obvious especially to his dad, Garth, he was losing his will to live. I gave him quite a talk that day. You, you could see that he gave up. I could see how desperate he was. And, I mean, he said a few bad words in there, but that's when I knew it was serious, you know, because, you know, this, I could die any second. And I had went in there and raised my voice at him and told him, Brian, you got you to keep fighting, son. You got to do it for mom and dad and do it for you. With a renewed spirit, Brian turned his focus to rehabilitating his broken body. No squeezing a towel, squeezing this foam ball, um, shaking a hand, blinking. Small things like that were like this big monumental events taking place. Brian also found inspiration from a rather unlikely source. Olympic swimmer Gary Hall Jr. had emailed a letter of encouragement. The world needs people like you. We can't afford to lose you. Ride on, rough shot if need be. Smooth shot if that will do. But ride on. Ride on over all obstacles and win the race. Welcome back. I look forward to one day meeting you. Maybe we'll go for a swim. This, this is the email that really got me going to thinking about um, swimming again in college. It took months of intense rehab, but Brian did what was once unthinkable. It was scary. You know, going in the water for the first time. Try and swim as best he could. He'd only make it 20, 30 minutes at that time. Let's just try, you know, let's go from doggy paddling to swimming in college. Yeah, our, it was a good feeling. Our state champion swimmer was like starting all over again. Just one year after the accident, and Brian was back at St. Mary's and on the swim team. But because his lungs were still healing, he had to sit out most of his freshman and all of his sophomore seasons. In many ways, 
Brian was already a miracle. But he still felt like there was something left undone. So this past summer, he made the decision. He wanted to test his body and soul like never before. The Iron Man has always been this event that I've always looked at and just been so inspired about. With his sights set on the World Iron Man in Hawaii, Brian began his training. There really wasn't much time, just six weeks to the race. So Brian pushed himself eight to ten hours a day, riding his stationary bike, running on his treadmill, and swimming miles of laps. Just to finish. I had 17 hours to do it, and as long as I crossed that finish line by midnight, I was, I was, I was good to go. Just three years removed from that horrific accident, and Brian's day had finally come. In the sun splash backdrop of Kona, he faced one of sport's most grueling tests. The Ironman Triathlon, a 2.4 mile swim, 112 miles on the bike, a marathon run. He had his brakes on hold for two years, guys. It happened when he was 18 years old, and that's the way I look at it. And now the brakes are off, and there's no stopping. There's no stopping. Competing to completing, Brian had reached the finish line. It, it was the, the feeling is inexplainable. You know, it was the greatest moment of my life, the greatest day of my life. His time, 14 hours, 42 minutes, and 25 seconds. Much better than anyone could have imagined. For the race and for the journey. I think we died on July 6, 2004. Garth and I did. Um, we keep it going, though, because we're very positive. Uh, October 13th with the Iron Man, we got life back. Yeah. It healed, it healed all the rips in our hearts. It, it was like a bring them back for us. Wow, great story, Brian. You know, in addition to being a student and collegiate swimmer, Brian has already begun training for next year's Ironman, and he's even considering turning professional at some point. Yeah, don't doubt that that could happen. There's a book due out this summer on Brian's story. He's also begun motivational speaking and is working on his own foundation. To find out more, visit his webpage, www.teamboyle.com.